Hi, everybody. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, and head coach Leonard Haynes here at Northwood Replay, week four, episode four. It's great to have you in the studios of MCTV. Uh, coach, we have, uh, we've now ventured into the GLIAC part of the schedule. We did that Saturday against Grand Valley, and uh, the Lakers brought uh, their game to town. Uh, you guys uh, played to a 27-3 loss to Grand Valley. Uh, my impression of that game, Coach, was uh, the second halves that you've had in the first two games, I was excited trailing by 13 going at the half because you had held down a fairly uh, prolific offense in a good running game, good passing game. Uh, we were down 13-3. Uh, in that mix, we saw Parker Blessed come up with a 47-yard field goal that counted, and if it had been 67, it would have been close. Uh, Parker got uh, a good foot on that, and he's really settled into a good special teams player for you with your kicking game. The second half, the third quarter, you gave up 14 points, and you had really come shut down following halftime in the two previous outings against the Ohio teams. You held them scoreless in the fourth quarter. Uh, you end up uh, taking the loss, but you had talked a week ago here uh, when we were preparing for Grand Valley that you continue on to take care of your own business. You guys are working on each position and each side of the ball and the special teams facet of your game. I, I certainly saw where those improvements over the first two weeks played into, into, uh, into uh, Saturday's game. But at some point, it really felt like they kind of took the momentum of that game over. Uh, first half, you guys had possession uh, numbers. You had them by six minutes or so. You had out, uh, ran more plays. Uh, and then their defense really kind of settled down your offense. Hindsight from that first uh, glee loss and uh, and uh, the type of type of game that Grand Valley brought to town for our opener well again uh, our players are always they're always gonna play hard they're right. always gonna be kids and never give up and keep fighting and so you know I don't think anybody gave us a chance but we we all know that we we're just concerned about us like I always tell you guys and right. our guys you know they're they're jacked up for the game as you should you know going up against number team number 10 team ranked in the nation, uh, I believe, at that time. They and were. so, yeah, to come out and fight, I, I believe we could beat anybody. And, and, I, and I will say that. And, and the way we're playing is, is bound to happen. And so we just got to stay the course, keep focusing on the process, and, and our kids are doing that. And, and they're, they're focused on the right things. And, and so that's, I'm proud of that with our young men right now. So Grand Valley is a good football team. We knew that. Their defense is pretty stout. Uh, we did move the ball, hold the ball a little bit, and you know, but we have to finish. Right. We right. have to finish drives. Just a quick follow up to that. You guys did come out with a different attitude, I felt, mm -hmm. uh, against them mm -hmm. than uh, the first two halves of the first two games. Uh, and I think that the first 30 minutes of play, the first two quarters, indicated that by only giving up 13 points and being in some positions with yourself and your offense and defense, where yeah. that, was, that was a great contest after a half of play. Well, it is, but you know we have to come out like that against Absolutely. everybody. It doesn't yeah. matter who we're playing, and the only important team on the schedule that matters is us. Right. And so our guys got to understand that we have to come out like that against everybody, and and play a complete football game, and execute and finish things. You know, uh, when it's like the red zone, and and stopping them on third down defensively and getting off the field. So well, we have to play lights out against everyone in this Every conference because this conference is a great conference and Indeed. everybody's going to bring their best. And you say it all the time, there's there's no, no moral victories when you right. lose. Right. And we've heard that from you and, and <clears throat> sometimes you just got to tip your hat to good teams. Yeah. They, they were an outstanding football yeah. team, right? Yes. And uh, we played well against an outstanding football team. Mm -hmm. My question is, what's the demeanor this week of the players? It's been three tough weeks. Mm -hmm. A couple of those games we could have won. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, Grand Valley was a very good football team mm -hmm. defensively. What's the demeanor going into homecoming? Well, I think it's really good. You know, the morale again is still high. Again, these guys, they know they're close, and we're getting better each and every week and each and every day, and so they know we're close. And it's one of those things that you, you just – you want it to happen sooner than later, right. you know, yeah. Yeah. because, again, uh, I think the mind can be a fragile thing at times, but if you keep a positive mindset and, and uh, a positive outlook, when things are going bad, I think you'll get through the storm. And I believe our players are still fighting. I know they're still fighting, and, and they still care. And, again, we'll get over that hump. You mentioned the red zone, mm -hmm. and we got in the red zone a couple of times against Grand Valley. 
Is it, you know, have you done something differently, or is it about execution? Uh, obviously, you want to score. Yeah. And uh, when you think back to that, what do you what do you? Well, thinking? their defense is pretty good. They they did some things in terms of blitzing and, and some execution things that that happened. Uh, getting Joey sacked, you know, our quarterback got sacked a couple times down there, and so, so obviously you get down there, you just got to tighten up and make sure you execute and, and do the things that you did uh, to get down there, you know, hopefully right. get in that end zone. And, and so again, Grand Valley is a good football team; um, they did a good job of holding us out. Uh, but those are some of the things we're definitely going to capitalize on because the previous week, you know, we were pretty good in the red zone. Right. And so, again, going up against a football team, you cannot have any mistakes. Well, we had talked about playing a quality game on Saturday against a quality opponent, Coach, and in, uh, uh, even according to the stats, we did just that. Let's uh, take for those who were there and want to remember some of those quality uh, apps of the, of the Timberwolves, let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our, our film from, from Saturday's game against Grand Valley. Okay. Here we go on defense. Uh, Simeon Lawrence has a pretty good pass rush here. Falls in to sack the Grand Valley quarterback. <clears throat> you know, he's been becoming pretty productive uh, throughout the season. And here's Alex Bacuzzi, our special teams kick return. You know, Al's getting pretty close, I think, to breaking a couple. And so our special teams unit does Make a great sure job. Make sure he runs with his head off that. Yes, sure he does. sees the field. He can definitely see the field. And here in defense again here, <clears throat> it's a great, great wow. pressure by Darius McCray. I wish we would have gotten that pick, but that's a great, great play. Yeah. Held him to a field goal there. Uh, here it is. The pass to Jake Vincent across the middle. Keep the drive going. Got second and six, still on offense. Run a little speed option play to the edge. And Jaden Lewis is definitely coming into his own. You can see he's stick that foot in the ground and get vertical. He's definitely becoming a threat. Here's Brian Wright, first year, first time playing, first year. You know, put a little bit of what we call wildcat in, and he yeah, actually came, came to us. The old hopper, didn't oh, yeah, he was running good with his head up too. He was, he was surveying the field. And Parker Bluss, 47-yard field goal. And some. It's, yeah, this young man is playing with a great deal of confidence. Uh, sure. Love the way he plays. There's Alex who's again on that kick return, the kick return unit. With some deep, great yeah, blocks. Uh -huh. yeah, like I said, he's getting close. There's another speed option play to the edge. It's a casual goldsmith running. He's a hard runner again. He's again a player that's definitely starting to take a shape. Game for the freshman. Yes. <clears throat> Offensively, here as we go. A we'll pass to, uh, I can't see the number. Uh, that's Micah. Micah Price. Micah, Micah Price. Price. Key, key drive as well. Uh, roll out pass here to our tight end, Nathan Skeen. Good to see that. that. Great. Yes, that was great. Again, keep the drive alive. A little bit of scramble here by Joe. And doing a good job with the pressure of Grand Valley. Oh, there. yeah. Because they were coming with some pressure, guys, yeah. as, you, as you guys know. Again, they're a pretty good team, good defense. And we have uh, Joe drop back, steps up, takes off running. Gets the first down, key first down. Back on defense. There's a little pick by Ken Keenan Williamson. He ended up with five tackles on the day as well. Yep. Keenan. Keenan's fun. Yeah, he's, he is fun. Always around the ball. <laughs> you know, yeah. Back to defense here. A little screenplay by Grand Valley. That guy's rally to the ball. Make the stop. You know, that's a key play for Grand Valley. Was well, a key play as a screenplay. And then a little scramble by our Nate. Nate Gomez is in. Throws that to Brian Keith for a big game. So, as you can see, we got down in the red zone. We, did, we gotta be able to finish when we get down. All right. Well, we take a look at uh, that and uh, that, of course, final score. Coach, let's uh, take a look at uh, uh, some of the game results from around the GLIAC. Half of them sitting at the top and half of them sitting in the middle well, towards the bottom. Here's results from last week. Well, you see our score, you know our score. But Davenport was over Northern, uh, Michigan Tech uh, over, um, no, I'm sorry, Saginaw Valley 23 to 7 over Tech, uh, Wayne State. Finally getting the win column, column versus a non-conference uh, opponent in Quincy and Fair State and Ashland played a, a pretty close game. I actually watched that game because our, our upcoming opponent, Ashland, is closer than what that score actually indicates. And so there's the standings for the conference right there. You kind of get a gander of what everybody 
for you know for sitting at overall. You got three teams tied for uh, first place. Uh, you got Davenport two and zero, Michigan State two and one, uh, Wayne State one and two, Northern one and two, Ashland one and two, and we still searching for ours, our first victory. It's coming. Yeah. I'll tell you what, and I noticed uh, yesterday looking through some stuff with the win in Saginaw Valley, if I may go into 3-0, and they are now in the in the top 25. That got them a 25 slot. That hit them slot. a 25 okay. slot, yeah. yeah. Right. And 3-0. So again, you uh, you guys still will dance against a couple of top 25 teams in Ferris and Saginaw Valley as yeah. of this week. Okay. But uh, So what do you what do you take from Saturday's game? I know that Coach Violet asked you a little bit, how's the demeanor, how are their guys? Uh, and, and you guys always practice hard. I see your practices. Uh, you uh, you have to heal from those. I mean, yeah. part of college, any any sport you play, but certainly at the college level, you got to learn to take the losses just like you take the wins, and you don't over-celebrate or over-dwell on anything. Is that where we're at this well, week? Well, exactly. You took the words right out of my mouth. you got to be able to move on. Whether you win or lose, you got to be able to move on to the next game. Can't hang there, can you? It's like I said before, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so we have eight games left, and we got to move on to the next one. Yeah. And now we focus on Ashland, and now our, our, all our efforts is going into uh, executing against Ashland. Well, Coach, we're going to bring in one of your boys, and we're going to not let him wear a helmet or shoulder pads. We're going to bring him in. We're going to take everybody who's viewing now to the offensive line of the 2019 Timberwolves. So stay where you're at, and uh, we'll do that swap, and we'll be right back. Hi, welcome back everybody. Dale Robbins, Coach Rich Violet, and it is our pleasure and honor to have one of the offensive linemen for the Northwood Timberwolves 2019 club uh, in our studio this morning. Let me introduce you to Jacob, a.k.a. Jake, more importantly known amongst his team as Van. This is Jake Van Insiderum. I sit him, and uh, it is great to have you here, Jake, and uh, thanks for being in this morning. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So we've had a chance to just talk a little bit about everything and I guess uh, coach is right he's going to ask you football questions and me having some Northwood uh, vested <laughs> in my own in my own self I'm gonna I'm gonna refer a little bit to football and the classroom and the community which you played a large role as a senior De La Salle High School is where you graduated from down mm -hmm. in Warren uh, you are a supply chain uh, su uh, operation supply management is going to be your degree come December and uh, 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 Dirty Doug Henschel keeps sending all you guys into here. Supply chain actually <laughs> refers to football players on Northwood Replay because you guys are just <laughs> filling the joint here. But uh, it is great to have you this morning. Uh, you have uh, had an opportunity to get some huge playing time over mm -hmm. the last few years. Uh, you have been developed and have clearly rested on becoming one of the team's leader on that offensive line. Mm -hmm. You have some youth strapped right beside you on each snap of the ball and when you guys are rotating in and out. What what kind of uh, what kind of role do you see yourself playing now? Whether you even think about it, maybe people don't ask you. But as a leader in that development, these young guys are looking at you on every snap and in every practice and in every film session. What uh, what kind of responsibility does that bring to you, or do you think about it just being who you are, doing what you do? Uh, I do think about it a little bit. Uh, I've definitely always been a lead by example type of guy. Yeah. So I want young guys to look up, see how hard that I've worked, and it's a little harder to show with a little bit of injuries throughout practice and everything, but just showing how much work I actually put into it, how much passion I have to, into it, you know, I want them to know that that's what it takes you know, to be successful, especially in this conference. Uh, but I also need to 
be able to communicate to them, make sure they know everything they have to do, all, all the plays, all right. the technique, which is what we're really working on right now, and just making sure they're all up to speed. And especially with having a true freshman on the line, we right. really got to <laughs> get the reins on him uh, real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Jake, talking a little bit about football, <clears throat> the old line guys get no glory, mm -hmm. right? You're in the trenches every day, and your job is to protect the guy carrying the ball mm -hmm. pretty much. So um, with that said, tell us a little bit about your position. I mean, what are you responsible for on the O-line? I mean, I, I just got to make sure that, you know, the, the star players can shine, uh, make sure that those holes are open, make sure that, you know, guys aren't touching my QB. Uh, and even though I've been playing with them for 14 years now, uh, just got to make sure that everyone else can do the job that they have to. I know we have a glorious job, but... I find passion in it, and I cool. find my own glory in it. So I'm sure you, know, you get. Format. I'm sure you get graded out after every game. Oh yeah, by the oh, yeah. offensive line coaches. Give me a couple of ideas of what they grade you on. So we get a lot of uh, like uh, positive points for like pancakes, dominators, putting people on the ground, cutting, uh, but just doing correct technique, getting the play exactly right, and, and doing exactly what you have to do. Those are our, our key responsibilities, and making sure that our job is done. Excellent. You know what's interesting is uh, uh, being graded on that and technique and practice. You, you play how you practice, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting. I think everybody watches a gymnast or a dancer and goes, wow, they practice a long time to get that technique. And I don't think they equate that back to an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. But I think it's real interesting, and over my years and understanding conversation with uh, Coach Violet as well as Coach Haynes, that it really is about technique and having that become an instinctive thing to do mm -hmm. instead of a process thing. Is it like riding a bike, bud? I mean, at this point, you talked a little bit about your career and your future and where you're going. You talked about coaching a little bit. Is that uh, that passion to, to work with young people or other men in this silly game that's in your blood that you can't get rid of? Yeah, I mean, I don't see myself getting away from the sport anytime cool. soon, so being able to, you know, help young guys and be able to still work in the sport would be just a great thing to me. I know what that's all about. I've been doing it for a long time, yes, and, uh, and I can't get it out of my blood either. So uh, hats off to you. Looking forward to uh, seeing you play this week at homecoming, and uh, and I know you'll do your best to protect those ball carriers. And, and uh, I always try. Another yeah. good setup for you, too. Them, uh, them Ohio boys bring them to town big, and uh, that's exactly what Ashland is going to do with a quality club. So your best game is what we're looking for, but we always seem to get that out of you, mm -hmm. Jake. So, offensive lineman, uh, Jacob Van Insiderum. And it was great to have you here, Jake, and uh, look forward to Saturday snap and, and the things you do on the football field. We'll be back with Coach Haynes in just a second, and we'll wrap this thing up, and let's talk about the Eagles of Ashland University coming to town Saturday. Homecoming, yeah. Auto show, yup. Football, that's a weekend. You got to know where you're going to be? Stay right here, and we'll tell you about it. Midland Community Television has exciting news for Midland area nonprofits. Recently, MCTV has undergone changes both technologically and organizationally to help you share your story better and reach your audience wherever they are. Our new services include public service announcements, special event recordings, audio podcasts, YouTube video, live TV broadcasts streamed online, and more. Call 837-3474 for details. Follow us on Facebook and search for MCTV Community Voices on YouTube or podcast platforms for more local stories. Join us to build a better community through media at MCTV. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Dale Robbins, Rich Violet, and as always, Coach Leonard Haynes of the Northwood Timberwolves. It is week four, our fourth episode of Northwood Replay 2019. It's great to have you along. Uh, Coach, we, uh, we have another, uh, we're wearing another target on Saturday, or we're after another target, as the Ashland Eagles just recently, after last week's loss uh, to Ferris, dropped out of the top 25 in the country for D2. Uh, they'd resided there since the preseason, so they spent the first few weeks there and all of a sudden they've run on what 
is uh, typically a, a, not a start for Ashland that you're seeing. They are one and two uh, overall, and they are 0 and 1, as is the Wood uh, and the Gleak. So they're bringing their game to town, and I see this year, next year is their 100th year of football down in Ashland. I do know Saturday they're looking for their 500th win in the history of their school. And not many D2 schools have gotten there over the history of their programs. This is a rich history program. They play good football, they always match up, and they got a bit of a run streak uh, on the wood. I think they've won eight in a row. What? How do you this week now prepare for another foe and, and, and another uh, another one at the top of the heap, foe in the Gleak? And you guys don't avoid them. You see them every week. What do we do to Ashland uh, to get the Eagles grounded for homecoming and auto show in our next home game at the Well, Wood? I think it starts with the quarterback, uh, okay. Brennan. He does a good job of orchestrating that offense. Kid can scramble. He can run, throw a little bit. Elusive, uh, right? Very elusive. Very slippery guy. So our, we have to corral that kid, and uh, again, we have to do our job. It just comes down to doing your job, period, and, right. and do it well, not just do it, but do it well. And their defense is pretty stout as well. Their defense, they've, they've been pretty good. They've been in some football games. Yes, they have. And so the one and two record, we, uh, I tell people, don't let that fool you. Nor does you an know. own three record or, fool That's you. right, <laughs> because it's a good football team. You bet there is. And again, you got to show up and be ready to play. Because again, the GLIAC is a tough conference. Week in, week out, you got to be ready to play whoever is on that schedule. And we have to come ready. We have to have the right mindset, and we have to execute against Ashland. Do you feel we're going to match up well against them this year? And the reason I ask you that is, on paper, they're, they look a lot like us. Their points per game is down. Right. Mm -hmm. 18, and the, uh, you know, usually they are a high flying club when it mm -hmm. comes to offensive point output. Their quarterback Brennan's got six interceptions on the year. Um, you know, they're again he is a key factor in this game, but they don't look on paper like the team that they have in the past. Mm -hmm. So, again, do you think we match up well this year? And is there anything else that you can tell us about what what you see as uh, the key to win this game? Well, uh, again, the key is us being we have to execute <clears throat> we have to execute and and we have to be able to run our offensive defense special teams effectively against this football team they're a disciplined group of guys we do match up pretty well with them and so there'll be some key matchups obviously <coughs> that you know Excuse we got to be able to take advantage of uh, as the game is you know developing so but if each guy each man just do their job do their 111th we got a definite chance to win and so uh, again Ashland will be a tough foe um, they always are, you know. They got a winning streak, so to speak, going against us, and we haven't beat Ashland since 2007, I believe. Right. And you know, we got to come ready to play. Taking a look at their head coach, he's been there a decade plus, uh, Lee Owens. Mm -hmm. uh, he has a lot of high school behind him for that. He kind of grew grew into the uh, into the college football coaching, uh, a different path than you took. But certainly, you guys been around the game since since you were young, right? Yeah, uh, what uh, what kind of a what kind of a uh, a chess match does that become against these boys that have coached in the GLIAC uh, twice as long and three times as long as you? Not that they're predictable, but there's a certain game plan that Coach Owens. Is going to come to town with on behalf of Ashland. What's that mean? Well, Ashland, uh, the coaches are very good coaches. Uh, Leo has done a great job, as, as you guys know, throughout the years and putting together a team. Uh, they basically recruit straight out of Ohio. Right. Uh, they've gotten a couple of transfers in here and there, but in terms of chess match, you know, I, I think uh, Ashland's going to come and do what they do. And, you know, they really don't deviate too much from who they are. And it's just about execution and those kids buying in and believing in what they're doing. Right. And, and they just kind of plug and play kids, really, you know, through the years as I look at them. And it's just about being a disciplined football club and kids buying in what you're doing and go out and execute it. Can you talk a little bit about Austin Brenner? He's, uh, I know uh, off camera we talked a little bit about him. He's elusive. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, – early early this season he's making a lot of mistakes when you put the pressure on him so is that a key well what, what i've watched and what i've studied is that he's made some plays um they've had opportunities kind of like us they've had some receivers drop some balls quite frankly uh where he's put it right on the money and you know things just didn't go their way uh they played some great football teams you know with indianapolis you know they played fair state so they 
they are a capable football team, you know, but they have made some mistakes, again, just like us. Um, I think they got a few guys, some new guys playing for them uh, on the offense for sure, and they, they're plugging some guys in. But I think we just have to make sure we corral uh, uh, Brenner because, again, he's a threat, and he makes them go. He's the yeah. one that can hurt you. Yes. Well, Coach, yeah. it's a big weekend at the Wood. We've got homecoming, as mentioned before. Uh, we've got the uh, auto show, the, the 57th annual of that. Uh, campus is starting to take shape now. Kids are out of classes, so I don't know why Van bolted out of here so quick. Why Jake <laughs> scooted? He ain't got classes today. Anyway, it's a 1 o'clock kick. Yes. Uh, we'll be on the uh, radio and at GoNorthwood.com at about uh, uh, about 20 minutes to 1 on Saturday yeah. afternoon. MCTV, these volunteers and staff will be coming to the wood to set up their gear early Saturday morning, so there's going to be a lot of places to find us. Uh, uh, any last thoughts? Thoughts is you are now celebrating your umpteenth homecoming oh, at the man. Wood. Uh, <laughs> you got uh, any wishes for? Uh, have you drove one of them new Porsches? Setting Porsche, outside of they probably won't right let now. me touch. They won't let you get <laughs> in that booth. You will not go to the yeah, Porsche booth. No, I, I would love to. I, I love to. But no, I just I hope the community comes out and support us. Keep supporting us. Uh, we're getting better each and every week. We want everybody to be all in with us, and uh, we're going to keep fighting. Well, you play the brand of football that brings that that to, to light. That's for sure. Last looking for, thought, looking sure. forward to this weekend. This yeah. weekend's game got a lot of friends coming. There's excitement, yeah. and uh, I think you'll do well. Thank you. There it is. You got us on the radio. You got us on television. You got us. You can stream us. You can go to YouTube and watch us. MCTV Community Voices has got us. We do podcasts. We're everywhere. Northwood University and the Timberwolves on Northwood Replay. For my partner, Rich Violet. For head coach Leonard Haynes, my name's Dale Robbins. We're going to tell you this every week, and we're going to tell you this till we can't tell you no more. Get out of here and go away, and go away mad. Go make a difference. Have a great weekend, everybody.